Ed Excel Mechanics 1, Mechanics Basic Principles, Subat Equations. If the forces on a particle are constant, then they must produce a constant acceleration. As the particle accelerates, its velocity will change and its displacement from its initial position will also change. We can calculate these changes based on these definitions. S represents the displacement of the particle from its initial position. U represents the initial velocity when t was zero. V represents the final velocity at the end of our specified journey. A represents the constant acceleration. And T represents the time taken for that specific journey. Hence, we call these the Suvat equations. So here we have a velocity time graph which shows constant acceleration. I can see the acceleration is constant because the gradient is constant. We've defined S displacement, U initial velocity, V the final velocity, A is the acceleration, and time taken T. So if we look at this graph, the first thing I'd like to do is to consider the gradient. And we know the gradient is the acceleration. So to find the gradient of this line, we need to know this distance. And that is v minus u. And we need to know this one as well. And that one is t. And we know the gradient is a. So the acceleration equals v minus u over t. And with a little bit of rearranging, we get our first Suvat equation, which is V equals U plus AT. If we now look at this graph again, if it's a velocity time graph, then the total area underneath this velocity time graph, the total area, must be the displacement of the particle. So I'm going to find that area underneath this straight line graph by treating it as a trapezium. So this side of the trapezium is U, this side of the trapezium over here is V, and would in effect be the height of the trapezium. And we know that the total area is the displacement S. So S equals a half U plus V times T is the second of our Suvat equations. I'm now going to find the area underneath this graph again using the area of a rectangle and a triangle. So we've got this rectangle, and then above it we've got the triangle. The area of the rectangle is u times t, and the area of the triangle is a half the base, which is t, and the height of this triangle is v minus u. We know that v minus u equals a t from earlier on, so we've got s equals u t plus a half v minus u times t. v minus u is the same as a t, and therefore s equals u t plus a half a t squared is our third Suvat equation. We can get a fourth Suvat equation if we look for the area under the curve as the area of this big rectangle, and we take off the triangle. So the area of the big rectangle is vt, and the triangle is a half v minus u times t. Again, v minus u equals at. Therefore, s equals vt minus a half at squared is our fourth Suvat equation. And there's a list of all five. A couple of things to point out here is when you're drawing your diagram, make it clear, put, recommend putting the object in the middle of the diagram, a double-headed arrow for the acceleration, the initial velocity u at one end of the diagram, final velocity v at the other end of the diagram, the displacement clearly labelled, and we have five Suvat equations. And the thing to notice here, if you look at the first one, it emits s, the second Suvat equation emits a, the third one emits t, the fourth one emits v, and the fifth one emits u. So you can always find at least one Suvat equation that will satisfy or work out a particular problem. So here we have a particle moving to the right with a deceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. 
Initially, the particle passes the origin with a speed 12 meters per second, and we need to find the speed of the particle after 10 seconds. Since the particle is decelerating, the particle must slow down and eventually turn round. Okay, so annotating this diagram, I know the initial speed was 12, so just as it went past the origin, I'll put a single headed arrow labeled 12 meters per second. It's decelerating at 1.5 meters per second squared, and I think the clearest way of labeling that on your diagram is a forward double headed arrow that labeled minus 1.5 meters per second squared. And we want to find how fast it was going after 10 seconds. I'm going to take um, to the right as my positive direction, just because the particle was moving to the right. That makes seems to make good sense. And another thing that some people do with these questions is they list, the super, create a SUVAT list. So S, the displacement for this particular question is not relevant. So I'm just going to cross that one out. U, the initial velocity, is 12. V, the final velocity, that's something we're going to be interested in. The acceleration is minus 1.5, and the time we're interested in is 10. So we're looking for a SUVAT equation that doesn't involve S. So that must be V equals U plus AT. And I'm going to take the right as positive. So the final velocity is the thing I'm interested in, V. U, the initial velocity, was 12. The acceleration to the right was minus 1.5. And the time we're looking at, 10 seconds. So V equals 12, take away 15, so that's minus 3 meters per second. Don't forget, that's the velocity. That negative velocity tells me that it's going backward. The question asks for the speed. So I would, on my answer, I would now put the speed of that particle was 3 meters per second, and I would just put backwards, just so I know it was traveling backwards. So the velocity is minus 3, the speed after 10 seconds is 3 meters per second, as we can see on that solution. So the next part of the question wants the time taken to return to the origin. I've got the initial velocity labeled on my diagram, and I've got the negative acceleration labeled on my diagram. If I create a SUVAT list again, and see what we've got this time. We want the time it takes to return to the origin. So if it's started at the origin, and we want the time to return to the origin, its displacement must be zero meters, because it's back where it started. So its displacement is zero. U, the initial velocity, is 12. V, the final velocity, not interested in here. The acceleration A is minus 1.5 meters per second squared. And T is the thing we're looking for. So we need a SUVAT method that doesn't involve V. So I'm going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And I'm going to take the right of positive. So its overall displacement from the origin back to the origin is zero. The initial velocity is 12. The time taken is t plus a half. The acceleration taking right is positive was minus one and a half. And t squared. So we've got zero equals 48t minus 3t squared. I've multiplied through by two. And then I've multiplied by 2 again to get rid of all the fractions. If I pull out a common factor, I've got 0 equals 3t times 16 minus 2. So we've got two answers for t. We've got t equals 0 seconds. So that was the time when it started at the origin. And I've also got t equals 16 seconds. So that was the time when it returned to the origin. And that 16 seconds will be 8 seconds to A, so OA would equal 8 seconds, and then A back to O would be another 8 seconds. So total time 16 seconds, as we can see in that solution. So in this part of the problem, we want to find the total distance travelled in these 16 seconds. So I'm going to show you two methods. So if I, if I list my SUVAT variables again, 
So we've got quite a lot of information this time. So S. So the other thing to notice is before I do the total distance travelled, I'm just going to do O to A. I don't want to, if I want the distance, I need to find O to A and A back to O. So from O to A, the distance is unknown. The initial velocity was 12. The final velocity as it reached A was 0 because it turned round. The acceleration is minus 1.5 and the time is 8 seconds. So um, the two methods. One method is based on not using the time. So I'm going to look for S using a method that doesn't use the time. So my method would be V squared is U squared plus 2AS. And I'm going to apply that method taking the right as positive and I'm going to go from O to A. So the final velocity at A was 0. The initial velocity at O was 12. The acceleration was minus 1.5 and the displacement from O to A is S. So we've got 0 is 144 minus 3S. So we've got S equals 48 meters. So the displacement of from O to A, so that's O to A, is 48 meters. But the question wanted the total distance. So in order to get the total distance for this journey, all the way back to the origin, it's 48 meters to A and 48 meters back again. So the total distance is 96 meters. I could have got the same answer by using the t equals 8 seconds from O to A and used s equals a half u plus v times t would still give me s is 48 meters with a total distance of 96 meters. So in the next session we're going to be looking at resolving forces.